are you doing? Treasure. Welcome to the first real review of QPU Advance. Let's forget about that one. Today we'll be looking at a game that just released in Europe and one of my most anticipated games of this year. Shuffle Knight. We begin our game with Shuffle Knight, being depressed after he lost his partner, Shield Knight, after many adventures together in the Tower of Fate. After some time, the Tower of Fate was sealed, till suddenly it opened again, and along with it the Enchantress and her order of no quarter. Now it's up to Shuffle Knight to save the day and find Shield Knight. Shuffle Knight comes across all kinds of different characters, like Black Knight, Propeller Knight, Spectre Knight, and... What the f*** <coughs> is... <laughs> Before we move on, I have to say, this game is really, really weird. And I mean really weird. From a dancing grandma to a buff Simon Belmont. What the f***? <laughs> I love it. Anyway, spoiler warning. If you don't want to see the end of the game, please click here. After defeating all the members of the Order of No Quarter and having one last duel with Black Knight, it's time for Shuffle Knight to take on the Enchantress. She turns out to be Shield Knight, who got controlled by the Cursed Amulet. When she's defeated, the Enchantress turns back to Shield Knight and the Cursed Amulet shows her true form. Shuffle and Shield Knight team up together to defeat her, but at the end of the fight, with her last strength, she strikes down Shuffle Knight. Shuffle Knight passes out and gets rescued by Black Knight, while Shield Knight stays behind to protect him. After the credits we see Shield Knight survived, but is wounded, and lays down next to Shuffle Knight, and ending with a classic NES styled The End. Here's some trivia. Shuffle Knight was created by Yacht Club Games, and released June 26th. If you ever played an NES game, you feel right at home. The moment you start off the game, it gets you ready to go on a grand adventure with Shuffle Knight. The 8-bit art style is gorgeous. All the stages look really detailed, like for example the Explodatorium. Looks like you walked into a madman's lab that's ready to trap and experiment on you. On the other hand, what did you expect? It's called the Explodatorium. All the characters are also really well animated and often do wacky things. And along with an excellent soundtrack by Jake Kaufman and two songs made by Manami Matsume, it makes the world feel truly alive. Seriously, this is one of the best soundtracks I heard in years. Some of my personal favorites are the theme of the first stage and Propeller the Night stage. Head, take a listen for yourself. While a lot of people might think this game just relies on nostalgic style, that's simply not true. Well, it is designed to make you remember what it was to play a game in the late 80s or early 90s. Yacht Club Games made sure it also felt fresh by adding new and modern design choices, which leads us to the gameplay section. Here's some trivia. Shovel Knight started as a Kickstarter campaign and the project was successfully funded, gaining more than four times that of the original goal. Shuffle Knight feels in place like an old NES game, like DuckTales, Mega Man, Castlevania, and with touches and rules from newer games like Dark Souls, 
and newer platformer games. The controls are really simple. You move with the D-pad or control stick, with B you jump, Y makes you attack, the R button uses your relics, and finally, holding down while jumping makes you use your shuffle to bounce on things below you. Simple right? That's what makes this game so great. The game teaches you everything about the game in just 5 minutes, without any spoken dialogue or text boxes. Even some friends of mine, who almost never play games, enjoy it because after a few minutes, they knew what they had to do and they had a lot of fun because of it. And it's kinda rare these days with games. But to keep the game interesting, Shovel Knight builds stage gimmicks around these simple mechanics. Like for example, in the Mole Knight stage, you got these green blobs that you can either bounce on to reach higher grounds, or transform lava into green stuff so you can traverse it. Tiny elements like these make for great, fast and fun puzzles, without ever breaking the flow of the game. Each order of No Quarter stage has something that makes it a new and unique experience. Every stage also has a hidden relic that will make your adventure just a tad bit easier, like shooting a fireball or my personal favorite, turning yourself invincible for just a few seconds. However, you can't use it all the time. You have this magic counter and each time you use a relic, it costs some magic. But you can refill your magic by finding blue jars. However, even if you find a relic, you still have to buy them. Which leads us to another really important mechanic in the game. Gold. Gold, of course, is the currency in this world. And you need lots of it to prepare you for the stages ahead. Gold is everywhere, in piles of dirt, underneath rocks, hidden in treasure boxes, and inside walls. Huh? Why are the walls in this game so weak? And why is the golden diamonds in them? Huh. Wait a minute. I got it. I got an idea. Anyway, gold is used to buy upgrades, new armor, a previous mentioned relics. And these things are not cheap, so you gotta find a lot of it. That's where the bonus stages and checkpoints come in. All over the world map there are small stages that contain small challenges that will test your skill and if you complete them you will be rewarded. And in each of the order of no quarter stages there are checkpoints and if you feel brave enough you can break them for some extra gold. This however means that you can't use them anymore. And when you die at any point in the game, instead of losing a life, some of your gold will go flying up above where you died. Of course you don't want this to happen, so the game gives you one chance to collect that gold back. If you fail to do that, and die another time, you lost all the gold for good. But that makes for excellent risk versus reward gameplay. Will you go after that hard to get treasure box? Or will you break the checkpoint right before the boss to get some extra gold for the armor that you want? These make for some tense moments. Another highlight of the game are the bosses. At the end of every order of no quarter stage, there's a boss fight. And these boss fights are intense. Each of them has a unique fighting style, like Plate Knight uses chemical stuff to kill you, and Propeller Knight commands his airship to attack you. The fights are really hard, but still doable. Besides the order of no quarter battles, there are some extra boss battles that you can come across. These are all optional, but reward you with more gold. This game has also a lot of replay value. After beating the game, New Game Plus gets unlocked. Enemies do more damage, there are less checkpoints and less health items, and it's essentially a hard mode of the game. And if that's not enough, the game will get free DLC updates. In conclusion, Shuffle Knight is the perfect platformer, great graphics, great music, great gameplay, and great replay value. And it's just freaking fun! At a low price of just 15 euros and even getting free DLC, this is a game you just have to own. And that's why Shovel Knight gets a diamond shovel out of them. Well guys, if you don't mind, I have some trash to dick up. Till next time! I had this weirdest stream. You were in it, I were in it, and he was. Thanks for watching my review on Shuffle Knight. Uh, if you liked it, please 
hit the like button or subscribe button and if you want to see more somewhere on the screen there will probably be a video to another video and in the future I'm going to make a few new videos so also thank you Adam and thank you Sandrine for uh, helping me with making the video uh, well that's it for this end slate and maybe till next time till next time ah, I need to improve my English <laughs>